The Boeotian League is one of the more interesting leagues in the Hellenistic era. They were founded in the late 500s BC and existed for a few hundred years. They were led in their confederation by Thebes, but during the Greco-Persian Wars, after the Battle of Thermopylae, the Boeotians would turn to Persian help, and this then caused them to get harshly punished by the rest of the victorious Greeks after the Persians were pushed back. But in RIS, they are of a very difficult nation that can be really hard to get right. So today, I'm going to show you how you can easily make a nice little empire, including Attica, um, Evia, and into some parts of central Greece and the Peloponnese, really quickly, within 10 turns of the game, starting with 16,000 in the bank and 11,000 coming into the bank per turn as well. So stay tuned to find out how. Hi guys, welcome back, I am Red Zed, and today we are here with another faction guide for RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. And today's guide features the Boeotian League, of course, you already know that, of course. But if you do want any more faction guides, guys, there is a link down in the description. And there's, of course, the Rhodes Hot Seat campaign and Epirus campaign as well for all your RAS content but the Boeotian League they start here in the east of Greece right next to Athens and the Antigonids with the Aetolians very close by as well so there is plenty of action down here in this region you start with three settlements two large towns and a town and you are Aeolian culture as well, which is all of Thessaly too. And there's a few settlements dotted around of Aeolian culture. Most notably, there's a few over in um, An Anatolia, especially around Pergamon, as we can see as well. So culturally, you're not so alone as, say, the Aetolians, but also not exactly, <laughs> you know, covering the map with your culture. So let's talk a little bit about the strengths and weaknesses of the Boeotians. And the first strength is the fact that your roster is in fact relatively good. You start with some good, good troops. If we have a look, your Boeotian hoplites, 38 defense is very good for a hoplite unit. So you start with a decent level of hoplite and your Thurio Foroi is actually better than a lot of other Thurio Foroi in the game with that 35 defense and 12 melee attack, but they don't actually have javelins. So a little bit different. Your second strength, guys, is the fact that your first reforms, your reform one, is only to fight 20 battles, which is relatively easy and something you'll be able to do very quickly. And it unlocks an absolute plethora of elite troops. You get your phalangites, your standard Boeotian Peltophoroi, but then you get the Agema of the Peltophoroi, and you also get the Boeotian Epilectoi, which is an elite spearman unit. So that first reform is a really good strength of Boeotia because it's a really easy reform to get, and you get some very good troops from it. Now let's move on to the weaknesses of the Boeotians. And of course, the first weakness is the fact that they don't really get any good missile troops. You get some uh, Greek Peltas, which are fine, but you don't really get anything that's that good, especially even after reforms, you don't get any Neocretans or anything like that. So you have to rely on AOR to get the best missile troops available to you. And your second weakness, of course, guys, is the fact that you start in one of the hottest areas of the game with so many people around you that can pounce on you at any moment. Yes, it is a really tough starting position. Not quite as tough as Athens, but very much up there. Unlike the Aetolians, where you can kind of block off a lot of areas, there are a few areas you can block off, but... It is still a very, very difficult starting position with a few different targets that you're going to want to target early on to do well. 
So here we are with the Boeotian roster, guys. And this roster is a very, very decent roster, I've got to say. A little less limiting than, say, the Athenian or the Aetolian rosters. Not quite as good as the Achaean roster, but still a very good roster, none the less. So your starting troops that you start out with are these three infantry units. You have some Neoniscoi, which are not very good. You also have some Thuriophori, which are a decent Thuriophori, but they don't have Javelin. So your Neoniscoi is your Javelin option if you want some shock troops, but they don't have the attack to back that up, and they have a spear, of course. You also get the Boeotian Hoplites, which are a decent Hoplite unit with their 38 defense, 15 morale, and 11 melee attack. These guys are going to carry you, infantry-wise, early game. Along with that, you get a lot of the standard uh, missile units, you know, the Greek archers, slingers, and the Akontistai with the Greek Peltas, which are an okay Peltast unit. They're not fantastic. They're probably one of the lower tier Peltast units, but an oh, but yeah, a Peltast are just decent sort of javelin units, really. Like, uh, they're going to stand up in melee for a little bit, not very long. But they're going to be better than using, say, an Akontistai. Now, the cavalry you get access to right away. Of course, your bodyguard, your Zistaphoroi as well on the third tier of building, I believe. And then you get your Prodromoi as well. So standard all there. But what happens after the reforms? The reforms for you are insanely powerful as the Boeotians. Because the first reform is just to do 20 battles, which is not hard at all. You can do 20 battles and then you get access to some really, really good troops. First of all, you get your Boeotian Peltophori, which is your standard Phalangite unit. A decent Phalangite unit, probably mid-tier, 35 defense, 18 melee attack and 16 morale. Not bad at all. Oh god, they just look so good. I, I always say it, guys. I've done in-depth in-depth guides on all of these rosters, by the way, guys. So check that out down below for full, like, 30-minute videos on all these rosters. And then your elite phalangites, the Agima of the phalangites, with the capage, with the plumage. That's how we know they're elite. There they are. 40 defense, 19 melee attack, 19 morale. And they even have... 13 alt attack with a sword, which is pretty insane. So these guys are even good when their phalangites are not down. They're even better. They're better with the phalanx down, but of course, a very good phalanx unit. Not quite as good as like the Antigonid Agima, but still a really good unit. And then if you want some more mobile, less phalangite troops, you've got the Epilectoi here, which are insane. They are similar in strength to say like a Spartan general which is crazy with 46 defense, 21 morale, and 15 melee attack with a spear. Not quite 15 melee attack with a sword. Not quite as good as that, but really, really good. They also have very good stamina, which is an underrated trait, guys, because that's just going to allow them to fight for a lot longer and be a lot stronger. And then your second reform gives you your Espido Fora, your better cavalry units and that only is to get to huge city so again it's not too hard to get this reform and then you get the espidophori this is not a unit with the javelins this is a melee unit and they're a decent cavalry unit 27 defense 36 charge if we look at them compared to the zistophori you can see quite a lot more defense mainly coming from that shield that they get which the zistophori don't get so a good cavalry unit that's going to see you through throughout the game. If you want really elite ones, just go for the Thessalian Lancers. I know I say that every guide, guys, but go for the, the Thessalian Lancers. That's quite hard to say. The Thessalian... The, oh, my God. The Thessalian Lancers in Thessaly. So that is the roster, guys. So let's move on to the building roster of the Boeotians, guys. And, of course, we're just looking at the temples. And you have a good mix of temples, in my opinion, the first temple you get is the Shrine to Athena, which is your law temple. So this is the building you want to build in faraway places. The religious building's construction cost is kind of useless <laughs> because the more higher up the level you get, the more religious building's cost reduction you get, but you've already kind of built it. So <laughs> it doesn't really help at all. But the law is going to be fantastic in your faraway regions to get rid of that corruption. Now, your second temple is your population growth temple. You get some population growth 
from this temple, which is really good. It's going to be very nice in some of your low fertility regions, especially around the mountains of Greece. So a good temple if you want to make a city grow a lot quicker. And thirdly, you get access to a really good temple. The Temple of Nike is fantastic. It is really, really good. You get experience and morale from this temple. So definitely build this in any of your recruitment hubs because this is going to be absolutely insanely powerful, especially when you get to large and huge city level. So guys, let's move on to the starting moves and gameplay. And of course, we are playing on very hard, very hard with extreme mode ticked as well. So we are on the max difficulty possible. And of course, like I've said with all of the other faction guides, there are many different strategies you can employ as the Boeotians to win this campaign. So I'm going to present to you a few different options if you want to go for them. And we are going to play one of those options. So the first option is to go straight for Athens. Athens is a minor city and a rich one at that. And by taking it, you're going to produce quite a lot of money straight away. Now, the problems with this is by taking Athens in 0.6, you don't actually kill Athens anymore. They have these two settlements on the islands up here. So by killing them, they might come and boat bomb you. And yeah, so that is not my preferred tactic, but it is still a good tactic to go for. Now, the second tactic is to go straight for the Aetolian League. And this is the tactic that was prevalent in 0.5. The reason why I wouldn't recommend it now is because the Antigonids have so many settlements around you now that if you're playing on a higher difficulty, then it is pretty much, you know, very likely that they are going to attack you very early on in the game and by attacking the Aetolians you might create a war on two fronts the one positive with this though is the fact that this area is so easy if we get our diplomat to block off with forts to fort wall so it is a really easy area to defend but I'm going to show you how you can defend this area anyway so yeah I wouldn't go for this one if you're playing on higher difficulties. However, if you're on a lower difficulty and are not too worried about the Antigonids attacking you, this is probably the strategy for you. Going for the Aetolians to start with and then looking at the Peloponnese. But the tactic we are going to go for today is a big ball tactic. A big ball of a tactic. Um, <laughs> it is a brave tactic. And it is to go straight for the Antigonids. No messing around. No fucking about. Literally straight onto the Antigonids. The reason for this is very simple and very clear. Because we border many different nations. We border the Aetolians. We border the Athenians. And we border the Antigonids and the GCS as well. But we share a lot of borders with the Antigonids, guys. A lot of borders with the Antigonids. Now, this war is going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but the Boeotians are a tough, tough cookie as a nation. So, you're going to have to be prepared for this tactic if you're going to use it. But, be with the Antigonids bordering us in so many places, playing on very hard and extreme mode, there is no way they're not going to attack us really early into the campaign. And if we wait a little while, these armies that look relatively big now will be suddenly 13 12 stacks and suddenly very scary and very hard to get rid of so that is why we're gonna go for that tactic and just preemptively strike these guys along with that corinth is a very nice city and some of these regions are relatively pretty darn rich so very good regions to take early in the game so we are gonna go for that tactic now, I have already min-maxed the economy, put everywhere onto very high, and I'm pretty happy with our generals. They're all very, very old, though, so you should hopefully get some younger generals very soon. Now, in terms of blocking off the Aetolians, we're going to pop in a fort just on here, so they cannot get past. It's going to cost us some money, but this is going to protect our lands from the Aetolians, because... They cannot get around through here without going through the fort or going through 
the GCS. So we are going to protect ourselves from the Aetolians that way. I'm also going to toggle the fog of war back off, of course, because we're not going to play with that on. Now, when we're looking at the Antigonids, there are a couple of things that you can do. You can either go straight up to this island and just take that straight away. But our preferred tactic for now is going to be going after Corinth very early on in the campaign. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave no one in Orkamenos, although it is... Uh, actually, no, we are going to leave someone in Orkamenos just because it does border the Antigonids there, so they may come and take it. Same with the GCS. So we're going to leave behind an Akontistai unit, and we're going to come out. Our starting army is not amazing, but it's not awful either. And by going for the Antigonids early on, we can completely block off the Peloponnese for anyone else. So by taking both Megara and Corinth, we pretty much own this straight here. We own this land bridge here across to the Peloponnese, and we can control people coming in and out of there and react to whoever wants to siege down Corinth very easily. Now you have two options, Piraeus, well three really, Chalkis or Megara, but like I say, we are going to go for Corinth straight away. So that is where we're going to go first. It is quite nice to square off this island, guys, but I really just want the money from Corinth straight away, and Corinth is a pretty easily defensible position. Yes. If we have a look at our movement points, if we take, uh, if we take, say, Corinth, leave a person there, come back for retraining and go for the island afterwards, we are still going to have plenty of movement points to defend Corinth in a turn. So you don't need to worry too much about the movement around here. Because everywhere is very close. And if you've got a general, you should be absolutely fine with, um, you know, taking Corinth, leaving someone there. And if someone sieges it down, then you can just come back and defend it. So let's get our spy. Let's finally remember to get your spy in there <laughs> and hope that they open the gates. We're going to attack the Antigonids and they did not open the gates. So that is slightly risky because they can bring these armies to bear on you. But I think we could probably beat those armies anyway. So that's not too much of a worry. And for the rest of the turn, what I'm going to do is get my diplomat around, selling map information, trying to get an alliance with the Greek city-states and potentially the Aetolians as well. So that we have, you know, some security on this border. Uh, but in terms of building, let's have a look at what we have available to us. We do have a port in Tanagra. Orkamenos also has a port, but Tanagra is richer. So if we have a look at Tanagra, we can see it's trading with Athens. So by building that port, that's only 58. That seems like quite a little amount for a port. So instead of that, we're going to have a look at Orkamenos. Let's see, 201. That seems a lot more like it. And then with the rest of our money, we are going to train another unit. Unfortunately, we just have just under the amount to train a unit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to sell an alliance to these boys. They won't accept it. So let's try to go with trade rights to start with. And then let's go for an alliance. No, they will not accept it at all. So let's instead try and sell them map information. We only need a couple of hundred gold. So let's try 400. They will not accept. How about Athens? They probably know all our map information already. But let's go for like 200. That's all we need. No, they don't want it. Really? Let's try for the GCS. We've got three influence with this guy. They don't want an alliance either. No one wants an alliance because we're on very hard. No, they don't even want a trade agreement. Wow, this is insane. I've never seen something like this before. Let's go for map information then. And I just need like 200 gold, man. They really hate that, don't they? They really don't like to do that. Who else have we got here? We've got you. Let's talk to this guy again. Just give me like a hundred gold. That's all I need, my friend. You must decline. What imbeciles? What imbeciles? Really? And then we've got the guy from Athens. Well, it looks like we're going to have to wait an extra turn to build this port. No, in fact, I want to queue in the port. We're going to have to wait another turn to queue in the Thurio Foroi or the Hoplites. So instead of that, what I'm going to do, let's have a look at our army. We've got a decent amount of infantry. Let's go for a Peltast because these guys are not good in melee, but they're pretty darn good in, with their missiles. And they have a bit more morale than the Akontistai. In fact, no, we're going to go for the Akontistai because although they're not going to do well in melee, we can leave them behind as a garrison troop 
and they're very, very cheap. So that's what we're going to go for straight away. So I'll end the turn here, guys, and we shall hopefully be attacking Megara next turn. So the Antigonids didn't come and defend their settlement. As usual, classic AI going to AI. So we are going to take Megara. I'm not going to fight this. So we're going to also do this. I know we're also automatically going to win with the auto-resolve anyway, but by doing that, hopefully you don't kill so many troops. I mean, 96 is kind of ridiculous for that. If I was you guys, I would have played that fight. Now, we have a choice. We have quite a big choice. And that is either to go for Corinth straight away, or in fact, take this draw-out battle which is a double draw-out battle. So, obviously, mold yourself on the RNG you guys get. This was also a draw-out battle until Athens moved after the Antigonids and blocked us off from there. So, hopefully, Athens does take the Piraeus. I mean, it they deserve it, right? They deserve it. <laughs> well, when I say I hope, I don't really hope that much because, of course, they're going to be stronger. So, what we're going to do, we are going to take our men and let's have a look at their composition of armies it's mainly hoplites so let us look at what we want to do we've got thurio foray and hoplites leaving behind an archer would probably be the option here so yeah i think we'll do that because i'm thinking actually no we're going to take the whole army and we're going to go for captain secundos there we go. We've got two draw-out battles. So remember, we need to kill both of these generals and all of this army and obviously 85% of the other army as well. So this is going to be an interesting one. And what I'm going to do is let them come in together so they don't withdraw. It's going to make the battle slightly more brutal. But hopefully that will allow us to destroy everyone in turn and get both of these settlements. Like I say, you're going to have to mold yourself to your RNG. If this doesn't happen to you, then do what is best. If there's a draw-out battle at Corinth, go take that. If there's one at the Piraeus, go take that. Because draw-out battles are so much more powerful than, of course, sieging down. You can get, like, for example, this one is crazy. We're going to get two settlements if we do this right in one turn. So, let's get into the battle, guys. Here we are, guys. And if the general comes in very close to us, then we're going to deal with it. But I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, there is one over there. So what I am going to do is send my cavalry forward to try and deal with that one. They are relatively close to this other unit, though. So I am going to try and do that. But by doing that, we leave ourselves slightly open hmm, to the other, to the other armies. But... Remember, they are going to join up all their troops first before they come for us. So we do have time to try and deal with these guys. Predominantly, I'm not going to use my Prodromoi to fight. I'm going to use them to harass the enemy. So let's get this sped up slightly. Here we go. Let's get them firing into there. And we're going to use these guys as, of course, a buffer. We're going to go for the charge straight away if they're going to do this. Now, guys, get out. They, they, oh, I hate it when they're on skirmish mode. They, they literally are pointless. <laughs> they just keep on charging. And there, they've stopped. Good. Now, we're going to stop firing. And we're going to get our Prodromoi. There we go. So, that's one city that is ours now. We don't need to waste any more of our um, lovely uh, stamina on this. So, we're not going to run anymore. We're going to just walk back to our armies and wait for these two armies to come back together. That should also make our life, when it, when it comes to the cavalry, a lot easier because the Tarantines plus the General's cavalry is going to be quite hard to deal with. So I've actually come forward slightly to try and deal with this army. Reason being is because I figured if we can take this army out relatively easily, that should be fantastic for us. And it will also, I don't believe these guys are going to withdraw because they still have quite a decent amount of troops. So I don't think we need to worry about that too much. And also, when we think about it, even if these guys do withdraw, we've still taken one city. So we don't need to worry at all, really, about it. I'm going to surround those boys. I'm going to bring these guys around the back as well. And have we got the Prodromoi? Let's go and fire at them. And we're going to bring our general this way. What is that? Demetrios the Handsome. Get some jabbies off at him, man. Get it. So and also, don't get attacked by the Hoplites. It's never a good idea. 
And there we go. Keep on firing. Keep on firing. One more volley. But there they go. They didn't even charge again, which is fantastic for us. So stop firing, my friends. Stop firing. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to save my uh, javelins for this unit. We're going to bring the Prodromoi back across. Because, of course, we want to make sure we destroy Demetrios rather than, um, you know, get in there. Get in there, men. Get in there. Now, these units are not very good, the Neoniskoi. But they're better than nothing, right? They're better than nothing. But the Prodromoi, we want them to chase down the enemy because they're very good at chasing down the enemy because they're very fast. So that should hopefully have helped. Let's get out now and go for another charge when we can. I don't really want to lose many of the Prodromoi. So here comes the secondary army. What do they have? Just some Peltas, some Hoplites, and some Peltas. So yeah, we really do need that Prodromoi to survive. And yeah, hopefully we can destroy Demetrios here. Demetrios the Handsome. Let's kill him. Come on, boys. Let's go. Go for the charge. There we go. Very nice. That should really, really make him die. <laughs> There we go. He's dead. So that should make this unit want to rout. Very, there we go. Routed instantly now. So let's get out. And I think we can probably kill most of these guys while they run away like this. There we go. 30. How many more? I think we're okay for now. So let's come back across this way. I'm going to keep the Slingers and the Acontisti on that side. That's not a problem. I'm going to get the Progenoi to chase them down slightly and bring my General forward so we can receive these boys now here we go with the second engagement or the third engagement should i say that's everyone there dead which is great but yeah they're not withdrawing i don't know what they're doing though if they're just going to leave their peltas out here like this i don't think that's a worry at all let's bring these guys forward these guys should be able to fire at them they look like they're going to go for the cavalry they always love to go for the cavalry i have no idea why but they seem obsessed with cavalry. They, they genuinely do. And our Hoplites and Thurio 4, I should absolutely shred these Greek Peltasts very easily. Is that all of our Javelins done? When, it, when they're all done, we'll charge these guys in. Prodromoi can come back as well. And honestly, they can... Are they withdrawing? No, they're not withdrawing quite yet. Good. I really don't want them to withdraw. I really do not want them to withdraw. Remember? So we're going to get these guys across here. I'm going to try and chase down the Tarantines with these guys. Because these guys are going to bait them into fighting. So let's come. Are they withdrawing? No, they're just withdrawing to a better spot, it looks like. Oh, guys, 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 guys. Not through the middle of these mercenary hoplites, okay? <laughs> there we go. Let's surround these mercenary hoplites if we can. General. See, they love to just fight cavalry. I don't know why. Guys, did I say charge? Looks like the general just loves to charge. Come on, man. You've just lost two men because you wanted to fucking charge them for no reason. These guys are just chasing us. Oh, my God. Honestly, I don't know whether it's possible, but there needs to be something, like, in the game where if they turn and run away, they get absolutely slaughtered because it happens so fucking much. <laughs> Come on. Like, what are they doing? Fuck off. Pricks, honestly. Come on. Right, then. Let's get our guys forward again. Let's try and bait these boys into a charge if they can. How have we not killed this uh, Peltast yet with our cavalry? This should do it, though. This should absolutely destroy them. There we go. Fantastic. Now our guys are not going to be surrounding them at all. So that's quite annoying, but that's fine. So I don't mind now if I took a load of damage from running away. But, yeah, it's fine. These guys try and just get around that way more. And then we'll bring our cavalry up this way. Now, hopefully, we're able to attack these Peltas. Looks like they're going to go for us. I have no idea why. Now you guys can charge. Now you guys as well. They're wavering now. Good. So I don't know what they're doing. Cavalry, let's just get behind. Like, I don't want to face these guys or get javies thrown at me because of these guys. So let's just get behind our army and hide they want to try and relieve these boys that's no problem either but uh looks like we're going to be fine here we go now they've got javelin men this is the problem now all they have is javelin men you guys fire at the tarantines i don't care about this Peltast unit all i care about is tarantines we need to kill them now it shouldn't be too bad if the tarantines like fully survive if the tarantines survive then we should have killed enough of their infantry for it not to be a problem 
So, okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. Good, 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 good. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, men, go. Right, we need our cavalry into the action now. These guys are just surrounding this unit. They're wavering already. Come on, the boys. Let's go. So, this unit's going to take some damage, but actually not taking that much damage yet. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting you there, but okay. Right, let's go in straight into the Tarantines, and then hopefully we can break them. Rally, so you don't die. Actually, get there, get there. Then we'll go for the charge, just so that we can fully surround these boys. There we go. Go for the charge, my men. There we go. There we go. We broke them, and we broke the Tarantines as well. Now, we've got to kill as many Tarantines as possible so that we can just make sure that we've killed everyone, right? You guys get after them, and I'm going to bring my general over here to hopefully break that other unit. We shall see. There we go. That's one of the generals dead. Now, these guys are firing javies when they shouldn't. They've just killed a load of our own men. There we go. We've killed them. Now, we don't want them fighting to the death in this situation because we do have the cavalry to chase them down still. But I think that's a pretty good job well done. I'm not going to lie. Let's continue and let's chase these guys down. Well, there we go, guys. 120 they killed and we killed 543. Fantastic. The 304, 115. Fair play. And the Prodromoy coming in ham as the MVP. Who would have thought? Maybe I should start liking Prodromoy. We've had two guides in a row where Prodromoy have been really good. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. Maybe at some point I'll start to actually like those guys. And there we have it, guys. Two settlements or three settlements taken in one turn, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> and I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to lie. So what we're going to do, we're going to garrison it with firstly a Acontisti in that one. And we're going to enslave. And then, oh, we, we walked in with everyone. So we're going to get the archer into there. We're also going to enslave there. Have we had anywhere grow? Yes, we have. Thieves, fantastic. That's very good indeed. And yeah, let's destroy their recruitment buildings. That's going to give us enough cash to hopefully build a few more units and a few more buildings. So let's destroy those. And we have one in Megara probably as well. Good. Fantastic. Megara's not very happy. So what I am going to do for the time being, is move the rest of the army. Actually, no, we're going to retrain. So what I'm going to do is leave... Hmm, who do we leave in there? That's that's the one question. Now, this area here, Thebes, does not border anyone. So I'm going to do something risky. I don't recommend doing this. But we're going to go into Megara. We're also going to put that up to normal, if it can go up to normal. Good. We're going to go straight in Megara with that guy. We're going to do that. And we're going to leave behind the Acontistai because we're getting a new one anyway in Orkamenos. We're going to come across. And with our money, we need to retrain everyone. Now, we do have some other places where we can train. Namely here. But the Neoniskoi are just trash. Like, they are not good. So instead of the Neoniskoi, I'm going to get a Prodromoi in there. I know, guys. I know. It's insane. It's mental. Why? Why would we ever get a Prodromoi? But yes, we will do. Now, with the rest of our money, I really want to save up to build that Governor's Villa in Thebes. Because, of course, if we don't make it grow, it's going to get increasingly upset. And we already have a building in Orkomenos. So, yeah, I think that's the best option. Now, hmm, in terms of what else we could do, this would be a very nice recruitment hub, actually, in Chalkis. So... Probably, yeah, we need to put the tax rate down as well. But instantly, we've gone up to 4,400 a turn now, guys, which is insane from being on minus 600. So like I say, the money will come. It's not too much of a worry. And they only have one more settlement down there, Karistos. So we're going to go for that. I know I said I wanted to go for Corinth straight away, but now that we've taken those two on the island, we might as well get rid of our threat to the south uh, uh, southeast of the island. Um, no point leaving that unattended, is there? So, I'll see you after the end turn, guys. So, the end turn yielded two Antigonids. <laughs> uh, blockading both of the ports we've taken. Fair enough, Antigonids, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That's something I would do out of spite as well. So, we're going to leave behind that Arcantistai. And we are going to go straight for Karistos. Like I say, there's a risk that the Antigonids are going to come from Corinth. They're blockaded in the Piraeus by Athens. Thank you, our glorious ally. <laughs> yeah. 
The one issue we do have here is that, of course, Thebes does not have a garrison. And, yeah, it does border the, the Athenians. So, I am considering taking this guy out of Chalkis because we don't really need anyone in Chalkis, but it is very upset. How about this one? Maybe they'll be less upset in Eritrea? No, still very upset. So, we can't really do that. And I'm not willing to sacrifice anyone else. Let's go down to high here. And let's make sure we are definitely recruiting some more troops. So, the hoplites are just better, really. I mean, the 304 have a bit more attack. But that extra three defense is so useful. So, we're going to go for that instead. We'll also have a prodromoi ready to go next turn. And in Karistos, they've pretty much got nothing. So... Yes, fantastic. Let's end the turn and let's see you again next turn, guys. Another turn, another little bit of dollar. <laughs> Not a huge amount of dollar uh, because, of course, our armies are now pretty darn uh, good. We really need some kids to grow of age, though. I, I, I'm very worried about our family just dying off. <laughs> that, that would be quite annoying. I'm not going to lie. Now, where is our spy? We forgot about this poor guy again. Here we go. Let's uh, try and get him in and open the gates. I mean, there's a chance he will. But no, he didn't. <laughs> Thank you, spy. Always so useful. Always so, so useful. I don't even know why I try at this point. but <laughs> That's probably why I always forget about them. Because honestly, they, they often do nothing. <laughs> so yeah, that's fine anyway. Now let's get with the rest of our money some communal farming in Tanagra. And we are going to square off Evia apart from the rebel settlements. And this is something I wanted to say, guys. Now, when you first come on to RAS, if you are a brand new player, you are going to be very used to taking rebel settlements to start with. Like, that is something that you're always going to be looking for. Uh, but due to the vanilla players, generally you start fighting rebels um, or start at least with one rebel, one rebel, one wobble, 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 one rebel settlement nearby um, for you to take. But if you are new to RIS, that is a red herring. Please do not go for rebel settlements because there is literally no point. In fact, rebel settlements are your friend in this mod. In areas, that, well, this is where I'm talking about areas where there are, you know, other factions around you. If we're talking, say, if I toggle the fog of war, and if we're talking Parthia, let's go up to Parthia. You're pretty much going to start by taking rebel settlements because that's all that's around you. Or the Sarka, for example. But when we're talking about the remastered areas like Greece, uh, like Anatolia, rebel settlements are your friend. They offer buffer states. For example, if I was to take Opus and Lamia at the start rather than going for the Antigonids, guess who's going to come down from the north? The Antigonids. If I was to take... Uh, well, there's not many other rebel settlements, but let's think about another example. Say I was playing as Sparta and decided to go and take that rebel settlement. I'm going to get attacked by Messene. And the rebels, they don't, go they don't grow stronger. They don't get better over time. So don't worry about the rebels at all. They are your friend. They are nice buffer states for you. And when you finally want to get to the point where you clean up this land, you can take them no problem but focus on what is the threat and the threat to you early game especially playing in these regions and on harder difficulties is enemy factions they are going to be uber aggressive against you because they're the player because you're the player that you're going to have a bullseye on your back even if you have an alliance with a faction do not think that that means they won't attack you because you will have an absolute target on your back as the player on harder difficulties. So focus on the nearby threats and not the nearby non-threats like the rebel settlements. That's all I wanted to say on that one. So let's toggle that fog of war uh, back off. Oh, toggle foul. Toggle the fog of war back off. So let's uh, square off Evia apart from this uh, one settlement. I believe in ancient times, Yo you Bowie, you Bowie, you Bowie, you Bowie. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, no, we can't. Well, we'll wait another turn and then we'll attack. So let's take the final settlement on Evia for us. 84 losses, not too bad. If you were doing that on the battle map, you would very likely get 
Probably no losses, really, with that one. And similar to last time, we are going to destroy this, of course. Let's get rid of that. And we are going to leave a guy behind. Now, you may be thinking, why do we need garrisons in these places? Um, especially when they start getting a bit happier. Um, the reason being, first of all, because they're unhappy with public order. And also, secondly, you know, the enemy... Uh, Antigonids now really do like to boat bomb you. So by having ones on the coast, they can boat bomb and just take those settlements all in one. So we have a little bit of a choice here. We could go back for some retraining, which we're not going to do because there's a spicy little bit of a meatball here. We love a spicy meatball, don't we, guys? So we are going to go for this draw out battle here. And I'm going to retreat, hopefully because we're allied with Athens. We don't get blocked by that. Let's auto-sort our army as well. And we are going to go for this draw-out battle in here against the Bantes and for the Piraeus. Because Athens, they ain't doing anything, are they? they they're, they're not taking it. They've not even fought a battle. So we are going to do that battle. We've also got another hoplite in there as well, which is fantastic. So we've got even more troops. We're going to leave them in there for now. And what I'm going to do is pop this Akontistai into Thebes just so that Athens doesn't get any spicy or cheeky ideas there. We really don't want them to come and attack us there. But we're also going to pop in... I think we're going to go for another Hoplite. We've got a nice little bit of cavalry now. So let's go for another Hoplite. And when this Neoniskoi is done, we may use one of the Neoniskoi to govern another city. So let's get into this battle, guys. Shouldn't be too hard. What have we got? Oh, just a hoplite. And then mainly Peltas, Tarantines, and more hoplites. Could do with some archers here, but we use them as garrisons. So, oh well, I will see you there, guys. So, similar to last time, we're going to look for that other army and where it's coming in from. And hopefully either destroy it really quickly or um, just wait for them to join up. Because, like I say... We need to kill 85% of this army and the general. And we also need to make sure we kill 85% of this one. So if we leave these guys for too long, they are just going to withdraw if we go and kill this other army straight away. And one extra hoplite isn't really going to make the difference, I don't think, in this battle, guys. So we're just going to maybe come forward slightly, but not too much, just to put a little bit of pressure on these guys and see what the AI does. Stratahorse! The Boeotians are coming! Quick! Hide behind the tree! Hide behind the tree! They can't see us! They can't see us! What are they doing? Now that the army is fully in place and they've brought their hoplite along, we are going to move forward and hopefully crush them against this. That means there's only one way we can flank and they can flank around the left-hand side. I'm also going to not run my cavalry for a little bit just so they don't get too tired and also so they don't overtake the troops now run and stop, run and stop, and now you can run. And then we are going to get into the fight as quick as possible because, of course, they have skirmish troops. We do not have skirmish troops. So we need to go and engage them ASAP. So we've already got javelins coming from the Prodromoi there. Ideally, I would like my Prodromoi to fire at the Tarantines. That's going to be the best option. These guys can stop and now fire. Here comes their general. Let's go and snipe him. Let's go for the charge through our own line, lines at him. And look at him. He's already dying absolutely loads. <laughs> what a fool of a took. What a fool of a took. Right, let's get our guys around. Looks like their Tarantines are coming into the fight. Let's get our general out just for the second. Just for this second. They are going to get a flank off on that side with that secondary hoplite. But I think once that general's dead, we'll be fine. So let's get our cavalry all the way around. And there he goes. He routes. He routes. He runs. The coward, the fool, the coward and the fool. Right, these guys, they don't really have anything to do. So let's bring them through and try and flank a unit. Come on, guys, let's go. Right, we definitely need a Prodromoi after these boys. I'm going to put them on fire at will. These guys can go on fire at will now as well. You guys fire into there. We're going to get our general around this way. And we are going to charge a few of these units in the back. They have come out and gone for another charge. That's actually quite a meta move. I like that. Well done, AI. Nice little move there. But this Prodromoi, come on, guys. You need to catch that general. We cannot let him escape. They luckily have fire at will on, so they should be chucking javies at him. These guys are just firing javies now. Good. There they go. They're wavering. Their general, of course, is running, so they're going to waver. 
We could go for a little cheeky charge with the Prodromoy, but I think we're all right for now. These Hoplites are going to take a bit of a battering here. Let's rally the men. Make sure we don't die with our general. See, they did turn around then, but we still got a decent charge off. Let's wait a couple of seconds. There we go. Now we come out. Now we come out. There we go. One of the units is routing. So let's go try go for a chain route in here. Let's charge. Let's also bring our general around to charge these guys. Now, these guys are not going to have the same morale as the others. Because, of course, they have their own general that they haven't used yet. Oh, my voice breaking. I'm back to being 12 again. Um, but, yeah, these guys have another general that they haven't uh, had killed yet. So let's just go for the cheeky charge on them while they're running away. And then let's run ourselves away. These guys all seem to be wanting to fight to the death, which is not ideal. Did we? We didn't kill the general. Are you kidding me? How did you not kill the general? You absolute fools. You absolute cowardly fucking fools. How did you not kill the general? That is ridiculous. <laughs> that is obscene. Right. These guys are withdrawing, I guess. No, they're not. Fine. Okay. Don't withdraw. That's that's fine. We don't, we don't care. We want to keep on killing all of these men. So let's go. You guys get after them. Uh, you've used all your javies. You stop firing for now. We will use the javies someplace else. This unit up here, how's that doing? Shaken. So where's my general? Now, we'll kill everyone else other than the general then. And we should have a pretty easy siege of it afterwards. You guys fire at them. General come around and we're going to charge these boys. So should be fairly straightforward. So I'll see you at the end of the battle, guys. Another great victory. So again, we lost about 120 uh, well, about 140, but we killed 500 again. The Prodromoy again, the MVP. That honestly hurts my heart and my soul. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Remember, though, guys, morale is king in this game. So by getting morale shocks off, you will win battles so much easier than if you do not think about morale at all. Think everything to do with morale. You can, you can uh, you know, pull off some crazy victories if you get the morale shocks off at the right time. So anyway, I'll see you back on the campaign map. So unfortunately, like I say, we could not take the settlement because of their goddamn general. So let's use... Oh. Oh, brilliant. And we also got a guy come of age. Fantastic. That means we can, uh, you know, relieve some of our garrisons. They're actually... He's actually in Orkomenos. I'm happy with that. So we'll keep him there for now. And yeah, finally, we've got a younger guy because... <laughs> All our guys are pretty darn old, so we do need some more guys ASAP, really. Some, hopefully, some adoptions if we've got some older uh, children. So let's go for that. Unfortunately, yeah, he died, so we can't do anything about that. We've got another family member. Good. And Sparta and Messene are at war. And Sparta and the Antigonids have broken their alliance. That's very good for us. That might mean we're able to get an alliance with Sparta itself. We've now got a port at Orkomenos trading with Chalkis. Fantastic. Now, what else do we want to build? Have we got troops on the way? We do. We do. We do have plenty of troops. Um, like I said, Chalkis may be a good option for a recruitment hub. We can't afford that right away. So let's see what else we want to build. Orkomenos is already building. Sorry, Orkomenos. Let's go for that instead then. Let's go for the communal farming. Get a bit of extra cash. Very nice indeed. And let's it press that end turn. So the Piraeus is now ours, guys. Another port to add to our collection. And now we're making 5,400 a turn. And that's with ramping up the amount of units we have as well. Now, in terms of how we're going to do this, I'm going to merge the Neoniscoi. If you hold control and drag, guys, that will allow you to combine your troops that way. And we're also going to put the settlement down to low. It's only on 65%, but that's fine. And we're going to go all the way back to Orkomenos. We did have an agent found in... Um, he's fabulously wealthy now, good. Uh, by Athens somewhere. So Athens has, <laughs> has cheekily decided to have a little dig at us, which is fine. But also, it means that they are very likely going to attack us at some point soon. So let's also get in a spy. They cost 800, which is a bit obscene. And let's also go for the Shrine to Athena. Get that extra 10% happiness. Just to make sure this place doesn't riot for too long. Um, and then we are going to go 
for Corinth and maybe Athens, guys, as well. Cheeky little tactic. Let's go for Athens because they are a stain on our nice little empire we are carving out here, aren't they? So, guys, I wanted to illustrate one point. So, Piraeus is rioting right now. It's gone up to 70%, so there's a chance it won't riot next time. But don't think that your only option is just to wait it out. It definitely isn't. What you can do, just simply swap over your garrison. So, we're going to swap this guy over and stick the Neoniskoi into there as well. So, Thebes is now happy on normal. We can even go up to high in Thebes. And now we can even go up to normal in Piraeus, but we're going to leave it on low just for one turn to make sure that they are not rioting next turn and damage anything else. Did they damage anything? They actually didn't. Fantastic. So on top of that, we're going to have a look at potentially upgrading some of our military infrastructure over here. Potentially get the city barracks so that in Tanagra we can actually start recruiting actual hoplites from here to really boost up our army. Costs a lot of money, takes a lot of turns, so it's better to get that early rather than worry too much about the economy now. Previously in 0.5, the economy was everything at the start. Literally everything. But now, with the time taken to build up your military infrastructure, honestly, you're going to get more economy from conquering. You always did in 0.5 as well. But you're going to get more economy from conquering than building some of these better buildings. So I still think, you know, building your military infrastructure up early can be a lot better in the long run now in 0.6 than it ever was in 0.5. So Orchomenos is, uh, sorry, Theognitidas <laughs> is quite old now. So what we're going to do is we are going to get Saukleas, the philosopher, and train him up to be a general. Now, where is our next target? I mean, Corinth is, of course, a good target. Like we said, we're already at war with those guys. However, war with Athens. Let's go for it. Now, if I was recommending a strategy, I would not recommend doing this. But Athens is quite a rich settlement. I think we've got the military now to go for it. We're going to take our young boy. Let's also have a look at his traits. Always check out their traits. You can see he's got loads of movement points. Not much of anything else, but minus 15 taxes. So it's a good uh, it's a good thing not having him in the city. He's intelligent, charismatic, but spiritless. So these personality traits impact the general bonuses. Um, so I don't think he's going to get too much more morale. But he is charismatic, so there's maybe a chance there. He's also kind and optimistic, so that should help him with getting morale. And he doesn't really have any influence on morale right yet, but soon... He will do. Now, the Athenian army is over here. So likely when we declare war on them, they're going to get blocked by this fort and Orchomenos. So that is absolutely fine. They shouldn't want to attack these as well because they are not bordering their city. So uh, we've kind of absolutely cooked them there. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> which is great. Yes, we are going to attack an ally. That's going to make our reputation go down. But like I say, playing on very hard, guys. Reputation really doesn't matter because the AI is going to attack you. If you had... You know, absolutely spotless reputation. They are still going to attack you. And with the rest of our money, um, it's quite hard to judge right now because we have no real governance troops. So troops for governing cities. And we don't have many um, generals on the way, it seems. So ideally, I don't like to waste time buying Akontistai and stuff. But for now, we're unfortunately going to have to do that just so that we can get some actual um, garrison troops for Athens once we leave it. Ideally, I want to garrison Athens with a good manager like Philokomos over here with his nine management uh, and then just put the Akontistai into Tanagra. But for now, yeah, we're going to get that Akontistai. We're also getting another Neoniskoi. So one, um, it's always a good ratio to go for one garrison troop and one actual soldier that's going to fight in your armies. Eventually, these Neoniskoi are going to become garrison troops because they're very cheap upkeep compared to, say, the Hoplites uh, or the Thuriophoroi. And that's actually very close to the Akontistai upkeep, in fact. Yeah, 430. It's about 100 difference. So it's not too much more for the Neoniskoi. So eventually, we're going to make them our garrison troops because we're not going to want these guys in our army later in the game because they're so trash. But let's end the turn. Let's see whether we can take Athens, guys. Well, Athens is now ours, guys, and we are going to enslave, so that might cause a few places to upgrade, but they actually didn't. Wow. 
Interesting. And we also got this nice trait for taking Athens. Now, let's have a look at Athens. Going to be a fantastic recruitment hub for us. Let's destroy this building. And then the first thing we're going to do is, of course, just build that recruitment hub. We've got Plato's Academy here as well, which will give our guys really good traits. And the Acropolis of Athens too, which is fantastic. So let's repair all the buildings. That's going to cost us a little bit of cash because apparently the auto resolve damaged all of the buildings. And let's get the recruitment hub in there straight away. Is there any AOR here? There is actually Athenian hoplites, but they're actually worse than ours. So no point in getting those boys. And let us then go straight on to Corinth. So let's leave Athens. Let's get this guy in there. We're going to leave this unit behind for now. And we're going to put it down to normal. Uh, and hopefully we can replace that unit when we get this Akontistai. We're going to keep on training these boys. I know they're not great. But we just need some meat shields to pad out our army at this point, don't we? And now we're instantly making 9,000 a turn. Let's get Corinth then as well. And what I'm thinking of doing is in fact saving my money for a turn. We should put you down to normal. Let's have a look. Anyone else too unhappy? You're all both... Oh, 35%. Where has that come from? Ah, from the blockade. Remember, blockades, guys, do affect your public order. So, actually, let's cancel this siege. We've got a spy now, I believe. So, let's lift the siege. Have we got a spy? Yes, we do. Good. Good, 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 good. So, let's see whether finally a spy can open the gates. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> classic, 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 classic. Wow. Thank you, game. Thank you, game. Awful RNG for this episode. And also, you can see this poor, this poor uh, Philokoros of Athens, the faction leader of Athens, is just blocked in. He can't do anything. Oh, glorious. I love to see it. Uh, hello, Athens. Um, yeah. I mean... <laughs> I would be insane to say no to that. So, yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Let's also get some trade rights while we're at the it, shall we? Oh, how person. about an alliance? No, very demanding. Oh, well. So, let's now take Corinth, guys. There we go. We lost quite a few men, but it's fine. Let's enslave and then destroy this building again. Now, Corinth, again, is going to be a pretty good recruitment hub because it's already a minor city. So, let's repair that. Let's also get the recruitment hub in there. And now we have... An absolute ton of money. So, guys, I think we're going to end it there. I feel like we're in a very, very good position. We've got a couple of towns growing, so I'll do our final moves. Tanagra is one of them, so we may just have to put that down to low while that building builds because I want that barracks in there. Orchomenos is another, which is fantastic. And we've got 9,000 now in the bank. So, firstly... Let's get a hoplite in there straight away. We've also got this Akontistai. I did say I was going to swap it out for something. Yes, the Neoniskoi in there. So what I would probably do at this point is bring all our boyos home. We're going to leave behind. If I go like this, 14 Neoniskoi. I don't know whether we can sustain happiness here because of that. Probably next turn. So we're going to leave behind maybe one, the other Neoniskoi as well. Because they don't need retraining. So that should be plenty happy enough. We're going to go back to Orchomenos for retraining. Spend the rest of our money on retraining these boys. And then we've only got 3,000 left now as well. So what do we want to build? Thebes has grown, which is great. But let's have a look around. Any good economic buildings that we want to build? Actually, we need to repair those. So that's all our money. I didn't realize we had some to repair here. Um, but yeah. Fantastic. We are making 11,800 a turn now, guys, which is just insane. We also have a pretty darn decent army, a good enough army to push into the Peloponnese. So what would I do next at this point? Well, again, we come back to options. There are many options once again. My recommendation would be to secure the Peloponnese. We have an alliance with the Achaeans at the minute, but what I would recommend is sieging all these down very quickly, trying to take all the Antigonid lands here, then going after Sparta, and then making your way around all the way in a big circle to the Achaeans. Remember, leaving the Greek city-states alone because of their monstrous armies and the fact that they are programmed to be passive and also the rebel settlements. Leave them alone. Go for the nation's 
And following that, the world is then your oyster. Once you have the Peloponnese, basically, as any Greek faction, guys, you're going to be rich enough to do kind of what you want, which is fantastic. Another option would be, at this point, to take out these Antigonid settlements and then go for the Aetolians. But once you've taken these two, it's very likely that the Spartans are going to attack you. So in terms of the order of conquest, go for these two down here first because they don't border anyone. Then go for Argos. Then go for Prasai, which uh, is the best order, I would say, because you're not bordering anyone that's going to be hostile with these. Then you can take those and then go to war with Sparta. So, yeah, I think we've done a pretty good job here, guys. Pretty darn decent job, if I do say so myself. So if you did like this video, guys, please do like and subscribe. It really, really does help the channel out. And let's talk about the difficulty of this faction. Now, this is a hard one because, you know, it's, it's not been that hard right now, but it can be very hard. It's the same thing with all the central Greek factions. It can be very difficult. I am hovering between a three and a four, and I'm going to give it a three and a half. I don't normally give halves, but I think this faction is a three and a half out of five in terms of difficulty. If things go wrong, it can be a four. If things go well, it can be a three. So, yeah, it's about a three and a half, I would say. And I think this tactic against the Antigonids tends to work relatively well. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure, as always. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.